Hello, welcome to EduImagica, the Medical Mystery Education Hub. Today, in this video, we'll talk about the Ornithin Cycle, also known as Udia Cycle. So, without delay or ado, let's begin. The Udia Cycle or the Ornithin Cycle is also known as Krebs and Slit Cycle. In simple words, Udia Cycle is a biochemical pathway that converts the ammonia present in a body to urea. This is done mainly because ammonia cannot be dissolved in water easily and it is a toxic compound. Whereas urea can be easily dissolved in water and it is far more less toxic than ammonia. What does that mean? It basically means that we can excrete urea with our urine but not ammonia. Now before getting onto the topic that how ammonia is converted to urea, it is very important for us to understand some concepts. So now the question arises, where does this ammonia comes from? Proteins are most abundant organic compounds and constitute a major part of dry body weight which is about 10 to 12 kg in human adult. These proteins perform a wide range of functions in a body. In almost every biological process, proteins are required. Hormones, enzymes, clotting factors, receptors, all are proteins. About half of the body protein is present in the skeleton and the connective tissue, whereas the other half is intracellular. Now each day, humans turn over about 1-2% to 2 of their total body protein which is basically the muscle protein. Breakdown of protein is known as proteolysis. And upon proteolysis, the proteins are broken down into individual amino acids. These amino acids are nitrogen containing compounds and proteins are major source for nitrogenous base in a body. These wastes are highly toxic. Millions of proteins are broken down in our body every single day which produces lot of nitrogen based. If we look at the structure of amino acid, we can depict that it contains nitrogen in the form of amino group. Now most of the protein breakdown occurs in the muscle and peripheral body. And nitrogen based produced due to this must be taken to the liver for detoxification. Because in liver, this nitrogen base is converted into a far more less toxic water soluble compound known as urea. Now these nitrogen containing amino groups cannot be released in our blood directly because free ammonium ions are highly toxic for our body. So there exists a way to transport this nitrogen base to the liver without converting it into its ionic form. Now this is a very important concept and a very important question that how ammonia is transported to the liver for the urea cycle. So, there exists a two-step process that takes place before the urea cycle. The first step is transamination, whereas the second step is oxidative deamination. These steps are done in order to transport the nitrogenous waste to the liver without releasing it freely in the blood. Now, let's talk about the transamination. If we look at the word transamination, it is made up of two words, trans and amination, which basically means transfer of an amino group. Now what essentially happens is that amino group in an amino acid which contains a nitrogen is taken away from amino acid and is transferred to some other molecule that is alpha ketoglutarate, which on receiving the groups get converted into glutamate. This glutamate can freely circulate in the blood carrying excess nitrogen waste alongside it without releasing it directly into the circulation. This is the first step that takes place before urea cycle and it is known as transamination. When the glutamate reaches the liver, it undergoes second step that is known as oxidative deamination. As we can tell by the name that deamination means removal of amino group. So glutamate is the only amino acid which undergoes deamination up to some extent. The ammonia is liberated into mitochondria and liver which is then taken for urea cycle. Now let's talk about the urea cycle. Urea cycle was first described by Hans Frebb and Kurt Haslett in 1932. It is a 5 step cyclic process with 5 distinct enzymes. Where the first two enzymes are located in the mitochondria whereas the other enzymes are located in the cytosol. So we can say that it takes place both in the mitochondria and cytosol. We have divided this page into two parts. The first part is 
mitochondria and the second is cytosol here we will, here we will show you different reactions involved in the mitochondria ammonia combines with co2 and gets converted into carbomyl phosphate by the help of an enzyme carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 and in this process two molecules of atp is also utilized then ornithine which is present in the cytosol gets combined with the carbomyl phosphate and gets converted into citrulline by the help of an enzyme ornithine transcarbomylase then the citrulline is transported back into the cytosol by combining with the compound aspartate and gets converted into arginosuccinate and during this process one molecule of ATP is utilized it is catalyzed by the enzyme arginosuccinate synthetase then the arginosuccinate gets converted into two products first is fumarate and the other is arginine by the help of an enzyme arginosuccinase at last the arginine gets converted into ornithine by the help of an enzyme arginase and urea is released as a byproduct this urea release is then transported to the kidney for the excretion this was all about the urea cycle hope you like the video thank you for watching if you like our video, you can follow us on different social media platforms. Links for the same is in the description below. Like, share and subscribe.